INFJs are typically not associated with the phrase anger. It's hard to understand how someone as kind and reserved as an INFJ could be upset. We are the personality type that values harmony and despises violence and conflict, after all. But INFJs do experience anger. Simply put, we don't like to feel or show rage. Teacher, how come you never get angry? A kid once questioned me. Will you learn and understand the topic more if I get furious? I questioned her. No, the student answered. Then being furious is meaningless, I responded. Even though it makes sense and it's true that INFJs think being furious doesn't usually help, this isn't the main reason why they don't like to feel angry. Why INFJs avoid feeling angry? INFJs typically experience discomfort and even humiliation when they become furious. Because our empathic nature disavows anger as a component of our identity, it is challenging to accept rage. I acknowledge to my pupil that I occasionally become furious. You don't want to watch it, though. You probably won't see me again if I ever become angry in front of you. I continued by explaining how I slammed the door in one of my pupil's faces after he continually tried to irritate me and step beyond of my boundaries. Before we grow furious, we cut people off. It's not a pleasant sight when I get upset, so once I feel it coming on, I usually get away from the scenario. Every time I lose my temper, I regret disrupting the peace and upsetting the people I care about. I'll then seek refuge and sob. Being angry is not a characteristic of INFJs. Empathy for other people is a positive thing. However, problems arise when we over-identify with our extroverted emotion function. We lose touch with our own fury when this happens. Because we think it's not appropriate to be furious, we suppress our anger when it's necessary. Owning your emotions is connected to the Phi function because feelings like anger actually reveal your unique beliefs or indicate that your boundaries have been crossed. INFJs might not be aware of these things. Empathy and rage are at odds with one another. There is a battle going on between our Phi and Phi functions. On the one hand, we seek to foster external harmony and offer assistance. On the other hand, we want our ideals and personal aspirations to be fulfilled. Since our phi function is more strong than phi, and phi is our blind area, it usually prevails. In order to maintain our peaceful relationships with others, we ultimately sacrifice our own desires for those of others. If we do become enraged, it is challenging for us to confront the other person again. Our ability to empathize with others can make it simple for us to understand their point of view and pardon them for their transgressions. However, it can also lead to feelings of guilt when we express our rage and wants. Being furious goes against who we are as empathizers. As a result, we frequently suppress and unknowingly get rid of our anger. However, I now recognize that this is not really healthy. INFJ's anger styles and unhealthy anger management techniques. I used to believe that as I got older, my ability to control my anger had improved because I no longer experience frequent fits of rage. But after experiencing sadness, I became aware of how poorly I relate to anger. My furious feelings are largely disregarded and denied, as opposed to being accepted. In actuality, suppressing rage is worse than expressing it. When you are unable to accuse or confront the source of your rage, it turns within. I was experiencing strong anger during my depressive episode but was unable to communicate it. I'm so accustomed to repressing my rage. My mental state then began to turn on itself, and things only got worse from there. So, once my sadness had subsided, I began investigating and wondering, where did my fury go? Why am I no longer able to feel angry? Why is it that when people are angry, I feel uneasy? I've learned the following things about myself and my anger management problems. 
but keep in mind that, especially in terms of intensity and patterns, INFJ males and females may handle and express their rage in different ways. Thus, I'm not saying that all INFJs struggle with the aforementioned anger difficulties. INFJ rage, the angry expression in violent form. I came across this core example of INFJ rage while researching INFJ anger. My friend is a modest INFJ softy people pleaser who tries hard to foster interpersonal harmony and abhors conflict and violence. He is observing how this incident develops. Without saying a word, he charges the man who was assaulting the bus driver, pulls him away from the driver, strikes him many times in the nose, drags the man into the snow through the open door, and then drops his Christmas tree on top of him. This man has never before raised a fist in his life. As uncommon as the INFJ personality type is INFJ Fury. INFJ rarely displays anger in front of other people. However, our Fury can be quite frightening when we are in a highly stressful or provoking scenario. I've warned my friend before that if they believe I'm joking when they put me in a terrible scenario, I might strike them in the face. And I was. The joke does, however, contain some reality. I am aware that violent tendencies exist within of me. I nearly killed my younger brother by strangling him when I was a child. I can't recall why I did it, but I do recall that he irritated me and I lost control. After I choked him, my brother told me. I fled screaming and wailing like a lunatic under a table. But I have no recollection of this. Most likely, because it doesn't fit the INFJ personality, my mind had filtered out the majority of this painful experience. But INFJs are able to see the hurt they cause to others when the extroverted feeling function comes on, therefore I can easily see this happening. As a result, we are filled with deep regret over what we did and wish to run away. Fast and furious, INFJ angry outbursts. Fortunately, I have never since behaved out of anger. My own aggression must have scarred me to the point that I never allow that aspect of myself to reappear. It seems as though I have exterminated or severed ties with my angry side. Naturally, this doesn't last very long. Like any personality type, INFJs have desires, and when those wishes are not satisfied, we become irate. INFJ can become resentful when they continue to prioritize helping others at the expense of their own needs. Then, occasionally, this pent-up rage is suddenly released without notice over a small issue. It reminds me of a boiling pot. Even though the water is boiling, we nevertheless press the lid down and attempt to contain our rage. What followed was an outburst of intense rage. Unexpectedly, we lost it and attacked others. People who are caught up in our outbursts suffer injury as well as amazement at our actions because INFJs often react differently. I used to express my rage in this way when I was a teenager and in my early 20 seconds. I would suppress my own wants in favor of accommodating others until I was unable to do so any longer, at which point I would lose my temper. Fortunately, it only occurs once every two to three years and normally takes place at home. Additionally, the fits of rage don't endure very long. It doesn't last more than 10 seconds. Therefore, I typically apologize to my family members on the actual day. Anger repression in the INFJ, silent therapy, and withdrawal. INFJs find it challenging to vent their rage in public. We are reluctant to express our rage toward others for some reason. Therefore, instead of resolving the disagreement right away, we can put on a pleasant face and downplay or conceal our anger. In actuality, we may be harboring bitterness inside while pretending that everything is good and trying to hide our anger from others. Some of us will prefer to remove ourselves from others, retreat, and treat them silently since it is difficult for us to pretend as though nothing is wrong in front of them. When we are furious with someone, we stop being warm and instead become chilly. 
This is a tactful technique for us to deal with our rage. And it should be distinguished from INFJ door slamming, where we entirely cut the other person out. When we withdraw, as opposed to slamming the door, we inwardly want the other person would somehow see their error and make amends. Of course, this approach is unsuccessful because most of the time the other person is unaware of our expectations of them. They may not even be aware of our anger toward them until much later. What causes anger in INFJs? INFJs experience rage for many of the same reasons that other people do. I want to highlight a couple factors, though, that may be particularly prevalent in INFJs. Unfulfilled or unexpressed needs and desires. This is likely the most frequent cause of INFJs' brief but powerful fits of rage. INFJs rarely push their particular ideals and wants on others, as I already indicated. We prefer to avoid disputes by making accommodations for others. But if we continue to do so, rage will unavoidably surface to let us know that we have exhausted our options. Aware of injustice or the crossing of our deepest values. INFJs have strong beliefs about how people should be treated and have a natural ability to empathize with others. INFJs may become angry when they witness unjust, cruel, disrespectful, or bullying behavior toward others or themselves. Similar to the Korra scenario given before, when the INFJ saw the man attempting to attack the bus driver, he transformed into the Incredible Hulk. However, I think that his wrath might possibly be brought on by unresolved trauma. Protection of oneself and unresolved trauma. The INFJ in the Korra example may have experienced physical violence. As a youngster or saw a loved one experience it, which is why he reacted so strongly to witnessing an assault. I came to the conclusion that my wrath might be a result of past trauma after talking with my younger brother and working out the timeline with him. Because I wouldn't allow my classmate to replicate my schoolwork, he bullied me. I froze in place of stopping him, allowing him to steal my schoolwork. My classmate witnessed the bullying, yet he did nothing to stop it. Since I never got to finish the trauma cycle, I guess the experience made me quite tense at home. I never get the chance to confront my classmate and defend myself. So when my brother provoked me, I was furious. Recurrently angry thoughts. Finally, INFJs become frustrated when they keep thinking about a problem but are unable to solve it. We become angrier the more we consider how the other person has harmed us. Our tendency to overthink someone or something can keep us mired in bitterness and rage for a very long time especially when it involves betrayal, manipulation, or lying. It's more upsetting when we feel that someone has taken advantage of our goodwill. How to manage your anger if you're an INFJ. In the long term, repressed and passive rage can be detrimental to our physical and mental well-being. Aggressive rage expression can be detrimental to our relationships. We must be aware of our anger and be able to control it if we want to live a more tranquil life. Here is how to handle it. 1. Recognize and accept that you are angry. One day, I received a call from a student who stated he had an exam tomorrow and wanted to slap his grandma for not scheduling the lessons with me today. I warned him not to be furious after sensing his rage and fearing that he might lash out violently. He quickly responded, why can't I be upset, in a harder, more irate voice to me. I recognized then that he is correct. Why is he not angry? And furious person only becomes angrier the more you tell them to calm down. INFJs may not be aware of how uncomfortable our own rage makes us feel. After that phone call, I began to pay attention to how I felt around parents who were upset with their kids. I discovered that I felt uneasy and even terrified when they were angry. I have a low tolerance for anger. You need to learn to acknowledge and embrace your anger before you can control it. Someone feels seen, understood, and validated when their rage is acknowledged. 
Their emotional intensity naturally decreases, making it simpler for you to calm them down afterwards. The same applies to your own rage. When you accept your anger, it will be simpler to control it afterwards. Never ignore your rage. If not, it will soon return with a vengeance that could destroy your life in various ways. 2. Allow some of your rage to out and listen to it carefully. I don't mean to act out aggressively, toss things around, or punch pillows when I say to vent. Yes, these actions may temporarily improve your mood and help you let go of any pent-up energy. However, they are not long-term solutions. By vent, I mean allowing the fury to voice its demands and worries. So, when your anger is releasing, it's crucial to remain conscious and listen intently. You will lose out on important information if you don't. The control of your body and mind by your anger can be avoided by practicing mindfulness. You won't say or do something that you'll later regret if you practice mindfulness. Being present for your rage, paying attention to your inner voice, and sensing the energy in your body are all important. No need to express your rage physically. However, the internal venting might occasionally be painful. For instance, on occasion, I felt like the enraged teenager inside of me, cursing at people. Sometimes the rage resembled a youngster having a temper tantrum, stomping on the ground. On occasion, there is absolutely no mental noise. Just a contraction of the body and tightening of the chest. It's crucial to not criticize your responses. You won't be able to understand what your anger genuinely requires if you suppress it too quickly. After a few minutes, the venting will typically end. You should step in when you notice that the rage has lost some of its vigor and intensity, or when you notice that the ideas have started to repeat themselves. 3. Show compassion to your rage. Often, anger is a front for broken sentiments, and below the hurt feelings, there is love, especially if you are upset with someone dear to you. Try to comprehend the true suffering that is underneath your rage. Children, for instance, desire to love and be loved by their parents. They wish to avoid detesting their parents. However, they feel sad, angry, and hated when their parents don't give them what they want or don't take care of their emotional needs. Love is easily transformed into hatred. Love, however, has the power to readily tame hatred. Your anger will naturally soften when you lavish it with love, compassion, and kindness while taking the time to understand why it is hurting rather than fighting it. INFJs already have these abilities. We listen to people and take the time to comprehend their suffering when we sympathize with them. What we can do is do a 180 degree flip and focus our empathy for ourselves instead of for others. We can communicate lovingly with our rage and discover what is hurting. The Zen master Thichen Hat Han advises pre-writing love letters in his book, Anger. Write personal letters to the individuals you care about in your life and express your gratitude for having them in your life when you're feeling affectionate. Keep the letters somewhere after that. Take the letter out and read it whenever you feel furious with your family, spouse, or friends, and your rage will quickly pass. We often lose sight of how much we once loved someone when we are angry with them. We don't really wish to despise the other person. We simply forget how much we loved them. For do your utmost to meet your demands. My angry outbursts have taught me that I need to convey my wants more clearly. I can't rely on other people or wait around for them to understand what I need from them. For instance, I used to be reluctant to shut the door when I was working because I didn't want my family to feel guilty about watching TV or conversing in the living room. However, you are probably aware of how difficult it is for INFJs to work in a noisy setting. I once gathered my family and informed them I need to lock the door when I'm writing. Instead of ignoring my needs and getting upset afterwards, I just did it. This does not imply that I am upset or enraged with you. To complete my task, I merely require some alone in room. 
When I leave the room, you can talk to me if you have something to say. I'm the only member of the family who closes the door, so I had to explain this to them. Fortunately, they accept my need for peace and understand where I'm coming from. Directly expressing our needs to others is difficult for INFJs. However, we must put this into practice, beginning with those who are closest to us. What happens, though, if you express your demands and the other person doesn't do it in a considerate manner? I understand that we can usually meet our own requirements. For instance, I could close the door and let my family cope with their own perceptions and emotions even if they don't understand my need. Give yourself the attention you need or let go of your expectations of someone if they don't pay you enough attention. Or do what you desire. Just leave the scene if someone is being abusive or treating you harshly so that you don't lose your temper. Anything is always within your power. Recognize that being angry isn't enough. You must take action to satisfy your own demands. If not, the rage will return often until you understand the point.